Bruins brought to you by Ice Picks and the Game Time app. And welcome to the Bruins Beat, presented by Prize Picks. Go use that promo code CLNS to get $50 back when you play just $5. And presented by Game Time, go use that promo code CLNS to get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. The money is raining. That's right, Connor. Uh, that's Connor Ryan. I'm Evan Bernofsky. Connor, what is up? Evan, I'm doing well. How you doing? Doing great. Doing great. A little stuffy, I got to admit. Uh, I don't think I'm sick. I don't think I'm sick. I think it's – I was in a rink all weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Then I was with you and everybody at Bruins on, on Monday. So it's like – and and the, and the seasons are changing and it's colder and you wake up. I do – I will admit though, I love waking up cold. Like I love I, – I hate in the summer when, you know, you're peeling the blankets off and it's like, oh, I'm too hot. Like I'd much rather be too cold while I sleep. Uh, so I do like that. But then you get out of bed and it just hits you. So I also don't love that. I mean, you know, like the when you go to like a hotel and it's like the Ramada Inn and the AC is broken. So it's like 54 degrees the entire time. Doesn't matter if yes. it's January or August. I wish every place was like that. It should be like a nice, a crisp 52 degrees in every building. Doesn't matter what time of year it is. Christmas time. That's why you got a fireplace. Well, that's where you, you, you can, you know, get you can get warmer very easily. Like if you're too hot, it's miserable. I agree. Too hot is uh, really annoying, um, especially indoors. Too cold, you can deal with. Because again, like if you're too cold, you can throw a sweatshirt on, you can put a coat on, you know, whatever. Exactly. If you're too hot and you're in public, there's only so much you can take off. <laughs> there gets True. to be a point where well said, it's a little Evan. too much. <laughs> you can't take anything else off. Um, okay. Bruins, obviously, uh, since you and I last spoke, end of last week, uh, they beat the Kings 2-1 to in overtime on Saturday. Uh, they lose to the Panthers 4-3 uh, on in a Monday matinee. Uh, where are you at right now? What what are you feeling at the moment? Uh, I mean, I think going off of that game against Florida, probably frustrating is once again the apt term for uh, how this team has played so far. I think there's definitely positives to to draw out of what we've seen maybe over these four games in terms of you know, especially that fourth line. Uh, by the same token, it's also not a good thing when your fourth line has been your best line. Um, I, I think we expected there to be some growing pains for this team, especially offensively to start the year. But uh, it's not great when, you know, Mark Kastelik, Cole Kepke, and uh, Johnny Beecher are your three highest uh, scoring players at 5-5 five five play. Do you know who the next player is who has the most 5-5 five five points for the Bruins beyond that fourth line is? You want to guess? Is it Charlie McAvoy? Nope, it is Brandon Carlo. Brandon Carlo <laughs> is awesome. Next. So <laughs> I love that. That is that is not listen, good for Brandon Carlo, who uh, you know, is not known for being an offensive defenseman, for being in that spot. Not good for the rest of the team, whether that's uh the fact that the Zaka, Lintom, Pasternak line, they've had a few good looks during the power play. Um, but I think they've combined for just five five on five points to start the year. Uh, the second line of Brad Marchand, Charlie Coyle, Morgan Geeky have zero five on five points so far this year. Um, again, I don't know how much you want to get caught up in, in things over what has been a four game sample size Two two of those against admittedly a very, very good Panthers team that um, even without Chuck and Barkov on Monday, that's a very good team that I think is clearly in the Bruins heads because once again, they fell into the same traps on Monday. Um, so you can kind of spin it however you want, Evan, right? You can look at the fact the the offense has not really uh, gelled so far to start the year. You can look at Florida and how much you want to draw from that in terms of what I think is clearly the Bruins struggling to play their game and, you know, more importantly, beat the team on the ice as opposed to trying to chase these guys around and try to exact revenge. I think the best way to do that is sending them home miserable with a loss. But I digress. Um, but, yeah. I think probably right now it has to be probably just the uneven scoring output. And we knew going into the year, there was going to be growing pains there, whether it's the the middle six, especially with like a guy like geeky in a top six role, what he had in the third line. Um, but I think especially the top line, not maybe landing as many punches five and five right now. And you add in the fact that second line is giving you next to nothing in terms of just tangible production. That's a little bit concerning out of the gate. I would say it is. It it is, and I think it's interesting. You, know, you, you look at they're playing. You know they 
play the Panthers twice in their first four games to open the season. Um, and I think the good news for the Bruins is by the end of the year, you hope you're a much better team. And that when we look back, when the Bruins play the Panthers, whenever it is in the playoffs, we look back and go all oh, those first two games, you know, first four games of the season, you know, different team, whatever. Um, what I think is a little concerning is sort of the line jumbling already. Uh, you saw it in that game against Florida, that, that second game on, on Monday where Jim Montgomery is shuffling that middle six quite a bit. And you saw multiple pairings. You saw shifts of coil taking uh, on the, on the right side of Morgan geeky on the third line. You saw, you know, coil down the middle with geeky and Frederick. Uh, you see Matt Potra and Brazo go up with Brad Marsh. And you see sort of the, the juggling of lines. Uh, and again, we're, we weren't even four games into the season at that point. Now I get it. That second line, you know, hasn't produced really anything for you offensively. Uh, you know, through three games and, you know, halfway through that Panther game. Um, but I do wonder if it's sort of a sign, like, you're already messing with your lines. You're four games into the year. I, I, to me, and, and maybe I'm alone in this, but this is how I felt uh, after Monday's game, it sort of plays into the fact that the head coach doesn't have a contract pass this year. Like, it, I think it all goes back to that, where it's like, I think, you know, we can get into a debate of is the seat getting hot? Because again, like Florida right now is their biggest rival. Um, it's the team that they've sort of put themselves up against at the start of the year. It's sort of their measuring stick. They're building their team to beat Florida. You get two tries at them to begin the year. The first game wasn't even close. Second game, first 10 minutes, you and I were saying this as we walked down to the, to the locker room, like first 10 minutes of that game, the Bruins dominated. And then you fall into the traps of, the, you know, and again, I, I get Zaka, you know, dropping the mitts with Greer. I get that, you know, and, and Montgomery echoed that after the game. Um, Marshan, you're jumping Schmidt, but, you know, Zadorov with the delay game and McAvoy, you know, going and hunting the Hagee, yeah, cross checking yeah. him. And like, I know people will get back at me on, on this one, but like, you know, that Pasternak Reinhardt play, I know the refs didn't call anything on the Panthers either. So I get it. But like, that is interference. Like, you did lower the shoulder into him a couple, you know, seconds after he uh, let the puck go. So like, and and Montgomery mentioned that after the game in his really short press conference, where it's like they're on, they're playing undisciplined. They are playing so undisciplined, and you know, does that harken back to like, are they listening? You know, have they tuned the coach out? Uh, because again, the, the undisciplined thing has been a theme through four games. Um, and by the way, I'm not saying that they have, but I think it's valid we ask these questions. Uh, and I also think it goes back to, you know, jumbling the lines up. You know, does Montgomery believe in that middle six? Uh, is, you know, and I think he's trying to jumpstart this team, uh, not just to win, but I also think because the more they win, the higher the chances he gets an extension. So I, I think that kind of, I think it all plays into the same things. Yeah. And it, I think it comes down to what we said before the year. Like if the Bruins. Mm aren't certain of what they, you know, they want to see more from Montgomery. You're putting him and just the overall team in this, I don't know the right word, it's precarious spot, right? Where you're creating urgency right out of the gate. Maybe that's what the Bruins want in terms of like seeing what they have in a coach like Montgomery and see how he deals with like adversity with this team that has a lot of moving pots, a lot of new players. Uh, I think they're trying to build a little bit more of a, a more physical identity. And maybe that's where some of these growing pains are. Like, I, again, I think the undisciplined play against Florida might just be a by a byproduct of the Panthers like making their yes. brains turn to mush. Like, yes, <laughs> that right. I think I agree with you. You know, as much as I think Jeremy Swayman says there's no mental edge, there's something there that they they lose it. But as you said, it's been uh, uh, the case in these other games against the Kings, against the Montreal Canadiens as well. Um, they have to clean that stuff up. And again, maybe it's just some of the figure out what kind of team you want to be. This is obviously a team that's bigger, more physical. Uh, you know, and it's maybe the growing pains along the way is seeing what works and what doesn't work as you try to, you know, cultivate this new kind of approach with the roster that they built this off season. Um, so I think that is part of it, but also it, it goes into just the, the urgency and the timeline. And, and, you know, as much as you look at this team and I would assume that they expected that this was going to be a work in progress, that the, the growing pains in, October and November, you deal with them now with all these new additions. If it leads to a team that's built for the playoffs in April, right? Like that seems to be where you'd expect the Bruins top brass to, to map out for this year. But that does that mesh with 
Jim Montgomery and his coaching staff when they are on kind of thin ice in terms of what this contract situation is, right? Like we mentioned it before uh, the season started with like, all right, if Jim Montgomery is here long term, of course he wants to give younger players like Lori and Patra and at the time Lysel time to to grow and develop and, and you know roll with the punches. You saw like Potra have an awesome game against uh, the Kings, and then he has that turnover leads to a shorthanded goal on Monday against Florida. Like you, you're, you deal with that if it leads to Potra becoming a good player, but that patience, it maybe runs thin when it's a coach who is looking at just the baseline results. And that's part of the business. Montgomery has said before that he doesn't care. You know, he's, he can focus on just the day-to-day things and not worry about his contract. It's human nature. When you're on a, an yeah. expiring deal like that, you have to look at the end results. Um, and again, it, it just, falls in line with, yes, the Bruins are maybe looking at the long term of the growth from now until the springtime, but is Montgomery on that same timeline or is he afforded that same timeline when he's in such a precarious spot, right? I think that is how, – how, how does the Bruins ownership and you know front office – can they you know have two different timelines here in terms of what they want the roster to be from here to there and where they want Montgomery necessarily to be? Because it does seem like it kind of splits a little bit in terms of what – the expectations and the timeline is when you've got a, an expiring contract. To me, that's the biggest thing. What spot are you putting him in? And you even heard it on Behind the B when Sweeney was, you know, talking about how, you know, that second line right wing spot is still kind of up in the air. I mean, Geeky has done nothing through four games to make you think he's the long term solution there. Lysel is down in Providence by people. Wa- I've not watched the Providence Bruins this season, but, you know, from people who've watched those games, it doesn't sound like Lysel is playing too great. Um, you know, and Matt Potra, obviously, we'll talk about him in a second. You know, maybe he's a potential fix there. But, like, at some point, they're also, I think, going to be in the market for a second line right wing. And does that match up with Montgomery's timeline? Like, you know, Montgomery obviously is a team first guy, but you have a family. <laughs> you know, you got to have stability in your job. Like, we all want that. So I don't blame Montgomery for certain things. There was one thing Montgomery did, I thought, on Monday that looked like a coach who expects to be here long term or sort of fits in that timeline. But first, quick word from our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on prize picks. Prize picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money, even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks. It's hard not to pick more receiving yards for Justin Jefferson or more passing yards for Josh Allen. So download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 five dollar lineup prize picks run your game now back to the show so you mentioned matt patra and he had an awesome game on uh on saturday montgomery called it his best nhl game ever um but monday was i think a little more eye-opening because you mentioned that that turnover he had at, at the blue line on that shorthanded goal but to montgomery's credit and to to you know doesn't fall in line with sort of what we just talked about with like you know they want to he wants to win now he's trying to figure something out um, he moves Patra up after that. And I found that interesting because when Patra made that turnover, I was like, all right, how long is that poor kid going to be stapled to the, <laughs> to the middle of the bench? Like how yeah. long is this going to be? And he didn't, he moved him up and Pat, to Patra's credit, he rebounded after he had some, uh, really good shifts, uh, late in that third period, uh, deep in the ozone. And I think like out of the last two games, uh, you know, since he came back, I think Patra's a legit bright spot. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, maybe also you look at the fact that Montgomery still, you know, carved out a good amount of time for him. Um, maybe that's also a byproduct of the fact that the top six wasn't doing much of anything. So like well, maybe yeah. that, that also plays <laughs> into it. Yes. But, but no, I agree. I think you look at um, whether it's Potra or even like Lori, who obviously had a tough start 
in Florida, get you know, sits out Thursday's game against Montreal, and then Montgomery goes right back to him, and he responds with the primary assist on Pasternak's uh, overtime goal against the Kings, and scores a goal himself uh, on Monday against uh, Florida. Really nice so, goal on Monday. Yeah, the kind of a trademark what you'd expect from a guy with that skill set in, in Mason Lorai. So I think one, it has to do with the fact that Patra and Lorai are right now offered maybe some of the higher ceilings on your roster in terms of production, right? And you're in desperate need of that right now. So I think that, that plays into it. But as you said, even though you have to expect there to be some growing pains along the way with those two young players, um, this isn't like a guy like Lysel who, you know, is on the outside looking in and you might have to stick with him if you really want him to be an, an everyday NHL or whether that's later this year or the years ahead. Like if you're Jim Montgomery and you're on a, an expiring deal, you want guys like Potter and Lorai to step up right now because they can help you right now. It can only get better if you're here long term. So I think that also plays into it because as you said, um, even with that miscue from Patra, uh, the poise, the playmaking is still there. And if you have a guy like that who's playing at this level, it doesn't matter kind of who his line mates are, you're going to generate chances. And that's something that beyond the fact they haven't been able to score, Bruins aren't doing nearly enough to kind of put quality looks in front of their opposing goaltenders. Yeah, and I think you saw in the end of that Panther game where they were in the ozone for so long, cycling, 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 and just how many high danger chances did they get in that sequence? There weren't many. No. And you see a lot of, you know, ba- um, low to high, which is fine. You know, you expect some more offense from the defense, but they're not really shooting the puck that much either. So it's sort of, you know, dumping it down low. And, you know, I think a guy like Patra eventually, and you see spurts of it now, is good at crafty passes to those high danger areas. And he's not afraid of those high danger areas. And I think that's sometimes to his, sometimes to his own detriment because he gets freaking crushed um, on some of these shifts. So you hope. Uh, that he ends up being okay, but so that like that drop pass to Frederick uh, early yeah. in that first period against Florida. I mean, that's gore. Like that's you want that kind of confidence out of him. Low right at the point, like that shimmy shake to the left. Like that's what you want. That's what you hope out of those young guys. So, um, Patra Low Rye, I think have been bright spots over the last two games, and I think that that's a very good thing. I want to get into another even, bright spot. Even, even Beecher too. Like yes, oh, I can't forget another Beecher. young guy. Four he points had a great already. Back check. Yeah, he had a great yep. back check, too, in that Florida game that prevented a, a, a two-on-one. And as he mentioned, the four points. I want to talk fourth line. First, though, quick word from our friends over at Game Time. There's nothing like watching an NBA or NHL game live. The energy in the building, the sounds on the ice or the court, the memories you make with family, friends, and other fans. It's unmatched. And the coolest part is when strangers sitting around you become your best friends. You can make these memories with Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, and theater. When I use Game Time, I also love the flash deals, which help me get discounted prices on really good seats. Plus, who doesn't love seat views, which give a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Again, terms apply. Create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. Now, back to the show. So the fourth line, Connor. Fourth line, just like we predicted. I think in our predictions episode, we said, we said Beecher, uh, Kastelik, Riley Tufty, that was, or Cole Kepke, excuse me. That line yes. is going to be incredible. Leading point getters through the first four games. Um, I, I mean, again, like, and, I, and look, I don't think people should be, like we were saying this on the elevator down on Monday. We're like, you know, we always preface fourth line guys with like, they're not going to give you 30 gonna points. Score 20, they're not going <laughs> to score 20 goals. I think I said that like 20 times already this year. And now they might just out of spite. <laughs> all score 20 it. goals. They might just do it. To me, that line is the perfect line against a team like the Panthers because they play yeah. Panther style of game. And I think that's kind of what this the Bruins want their team to be, to play like that, gritty, getting to dirty areas, you know, shooting anything. I mean, Castle shot goes off Beecher. Like, that's how they're scoring. To me, that's like the embodiment, I think, of what they want the rest of their lines to do. Now, will that fourth line do that forever? 
No, but I think if they continue to play the way they have been, whether they produce or not, I think is valuable. Yeah, no, and I think it all just comes down to like their motor, right? Like even like they've got guys like Castle and Beecher uh, that are you know big bodies and they have been physical, and I think that's obviously welcomed on the fourth line. But I think it's just their skating and staying with the play. Like I feel like like Cole Kepke, you've noticed him. I've like a lot of his scoring chances are when he generates stuff is either like just driving to the net or it's him like slipping behind a guy and like poke checking a puck as they're trying to gather to break the puck out. Like he's just always moving, always making something happen. And that, you know, just because you do that and you, you uh, knock the puck loose, maybe it doesn't lead to like a great a scoring chance, but it leads to more ozone time and it wears guys down and it, it leads to winning hockey, even if it doesn't mean a goal right there in that instant. Um, and I think that's, what's been the most encouraging thing is, you know, it's not like they're just, playing this smash mouth hockey of just, you know, bowling over every single person. They're playing all-star, they're playing the hits, playing walking on the sun. No, but like, I think if you're playing to like that identity of just <laughs> walking on the sun, hey, it's a good song. It's a deep cut. It is a great deep song. Cut it is deep um, cut. But when you look at just the way they play, if that skating and that, that motor is there for all those guys, they're going to at the very least keep on generating quality ozone time and if you're a line that plays a simple brand of hockey like that it's going to lead to promising look so again i'm not saying evan that they're all going to score 20 goals but they're not winning i'm joking but i'm saying they've got a pretty uh, winning formula right now that if they keep up playing that style uh, of play um they're going to continue to string together really strong shifts and right now you kind of need it because they've been your best line and has not even been remotely close so far this year yeah, I think if you're projecting for the playoffs, I think that's a line that's going to be real good for you. And again, it can change a lot. I mean, like, it, you know, a lot can change with those guys. Um, but again, they've been dominant through uh, through four games, just like just like we predicted. I will also exactly. leave uh, listener, I'll leave listeners with this. Um, Bruins fans have become accustomed over the last two years to having really hot starts out of the gate, especially under Montgomery, especially you know these last two years. Uh, don't fret and stress too much if that's not the case this year. And this team, as we said at the beginning, needs a little time to grow. They're going to make mistakes, all that stuff. So, again, I leave you with that. I leave you with that. Uh, Connor, what can people look forward to from you at theglobeandboston.com? Yeah, you can read uh, all my stuff over theglobeandboston.com. We've covered every step of the way, whether it's recaps, features, columns, breakdowns, all that good stuff. Read all of it over at boston.com and the globe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at Connor Ryan underscore 93. Go do all that. That's Connor Ryan. I'm Evan Marinovsky, Burns Beat listeners. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs>